and everyone realized this is a phenomenal generational talent. Yet he had to live in this world that no one else lived in and no one knew how to communicate to him or create a world that he could buy into to harness that talent. And I think that's the sad story was he was his own worst enemy. He was, he certainly was. I, I don't think his mum helped the situation because she, she was just as uh, delirious as, as what Ike seemed to be throughout the course of his of his career and obviously his life. And we'll, we'll obviously there's elements of the conversation that we'll touch on later on about Ike now and, and what's happening now. But I mean, at the time, you know, he's got his mother who's, you know, when you talk about his mum and you talk about going to his mum's house and she's got tinfoil up at the windows... And then you think, you think first of all, it's because, you know, obviously it's really hot where they are. But then when you find out it's actually because she's trying to keep the spirits and, and the demons out and she's got these beliefs and she's convinced that spirits and demons will get into the house. Obviously, that's going to be protracted down to a son. So he's he's come, he's the product of that environment. He's come from that environment. If his mum was so, he's believed everything like that then of course it's going to come down onto him and then he's going to continue that trend which is what he's done like the the the, some incidents which i'm sure you'll uh i'm sure you'll mention but you know it just doesn't make sense to i suppose anybody who's sort of thinking what we would consider to be on on a normal basis but my word uh, what what a tale what some of them stories that that we got and some of the stories that that luke g williams got through who, who authored the book the president of pandemonium I, could, I couldn't believe what I was reading. I couldn't believe what I was, you know, sort of visualising, read, reading through it. And I'm like, wow, did this really happen? You know, did these events really happen? Was he was he really that, that far gone? And I guess I came at this from a different standpoint, kind of just from, like, looking at pop culture. But, like, when I looked at the mom, I thought about, like, how the 70s had a lot of black exploitation culture films. In those films, there's a lot of alchemy there's a lot of voodoo. Voodoo's often thought of like as like a predominantly black culture element. I'm thinking of movies like Live and Let Die. I think that's the name, the the James Bond movie where there's Baron Von Roschke, the voodoo man that's going around. It's basically James Bond doing a black exploitation film. But I say all this to say, it seems like the mother came up in this era of like black myth, myth mythical thinking. And then we go into the nineties and then that's not as relevant or it's not as ingrained in the world. And then here she is passing down this superstitious thought to her son. Who's this massive man who has all the talent in the world. And he's, it's almost like being taught how to speak the star Trek language instead of like any, any language. So now he has this, he's predisposed, predisposed, Po, I'm not even gonna say that word. He's he's conditioned to believe certain things are true when most people wouldn't believe them to true. I'm not gonna say they are or not true, but my comparison would be if you're being threatened with staying after school in a classroom, but every day you go to daycare till 5 p.m. What's the threat in getting held back for detention if you're gonna sit in a room no matter what? And I feel like that was his view of the world was it was this altered view where he saw things in this way where the consequences didn't really have the same meaning to other people what what do you think about the the persona that he created the president and all of a sudden he's he's he's, he's sort of amalgamated himself into this this third person and he's constantly speaking about himself in the third person do you think that's part of the condition do you, or do you think it's just a part of his ego i mean how did you sort of interpret that well, I, th- I, I always try to relate things back to myself because I'm like the greatest self indicator that I can through lived experience. And like, I think I got into boxing because like a lot of things growing up were kind of crazy and intense around me. So like I had like this hyper focus in wanting to learn boxing because like, I think in my mind, it's like, if I put all my energy into boxing, there's some other world for me to live within that's different than the world that's painful for me. So I would like to believe that he created this Prez character because there was a part of him that didn't feel good about who he was. So when he became the Prez, then now he's the person they talk about on television. Now I'm this 
fighter that everyone says could be the next Mike Tyson. And I think that was his form of escape. I think we see this with a fighter in MMA named Colby Covington, where he created this MAGA character where it's like he was a fighter that was rather anonymous. Now he's this massive Trump supporter. And the problem with these characters we often see, the character becomes the person because the people actually more like the, the character than they do the individual And I think that that didn't help because I think Ike was unstable to begin with. And then this character um, just accelerated traits that we deemed socially inappropriate. It's like with uh, wrestling, WWE wrestling. It's like they obviously have the faces, they have the heels, the good guys, the bad guys, but they have the gimmicks, don't they? And the gimmicks are what, you know, these these guys live and breathe. You know, some of the most famous wrestlers out there that, that we were watched growing up, they lived and breathed their gimmick because it was 24-7. They didn't want to be caught being out of out of character. And it kind of felt like this is what Ike was, was doing once he'd got into that persona. You know, he was living the president life. And, and the most notable story, obviously, was the story about them ringing up to his room to get him to come down for the weigh-in for the fight. And he wouldn't come down. They hung the phone up, and then they had an they had an idea of ringing him back, but then addressing the president, asking for the president, and then the fact that he goes away as if to get the president, as if there's another person in the room, and he comes back, and then he eventually comes down. And it was like that's the way they got him to come down to the way. And I was like, oh, surely at this point in time, if this is you know if if you're the handler, you're the promoter, you're you're the manager around him, surely you know. You're starting to think to yourself, you know, he's 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 one can short of a six pack here. Surely he needs a little bit of help. But I didn't I didn't feel like they 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 gave a shit towards the end. I kind of felt like, you know, at that point they just dealt with what he was like because they knew he had this immense talent, and they knew there was a great potential that he could go on and and, and fight for the world heavyweight title where the money would come, and that they would get rich off the back of it. And that's that's to me what I took away from from that aspect of it and that particular story. Uh, but when you heard that particular story, what was your initial reaction to that? I, I got the impression that he was a guy that truly terrified people. And that like people were basically at a certain point said, this guy is a logistical nightmare. I don't want to have to deal with him. We don't know how he's going to react. We have, it seems like we have him under contract. We're trying to get him to a world title, but like, it just felt like, he had done so many crazy things that people were just like, what can we do to get this guy here? And how can we get him on television if we've already brought him out? Because once he enters into the world, we have no clue. And I, because I'm Mr. Pop culture reference guy, I think the comparison I started thinking about was Lauren Hill of all things. So Lauren Hill drops this fantastic rap album, the miseducation of Lauren Hill. And it was kind of like, a deeply personal album, but we never got another album, right? It's like this classic, you can basically play it for all generations in many ways. It's kind of like a, a throwback to a lot of different elements of music. Yet, it, if you there weren't there reports in the mid 2000s and now that she'll show up and she'll kind of give these strange concerts, you know? And it, I think that with Ike, it's kind of like Lauren Hill. We, we appreciate the greatness and we want that person to come back. But as a fan or a lover of pop culture, the hardest thing is to realize sometimes people have changed and they're not coming back. Yeah. I, I think that was probably, that was where he went, weren't it? But then I think the concerning thing was like, yeah, okay. It's quite evident. There's this, there's a form of mel- mental health involved here. But it was when he started objectifying women and when he started looking at women as 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 just sort of a lesser of a, a lesser of an individual, lesser of the species and, 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 and the way, he, you know, he's reported to have treated them and, and the way he even spoke about them. You know, there's many quotes about uh, in, in the episode that we mentioned about him. You know, he just wants to come get prostitutes and have sex with prostitutes and this is what he wants to do. And, and then obviously it leads to um, to certain incidents occurring. Um, which is is ultimately what leads to his his downfall in terms of the sport. But th- th- that sort of scary move from being a guy who sort of has this other personality to then going down the route of of, of objectifying women and being very dismissive and, and terrible towards them, I think, was what made it more scary. Like he's a big guy, a big intimidating guy, and everybody around was you know was quite scared of him. They're quite intimidated by him. And 
imagine being that individual imagine being around him and, and you know him not knowing what's next with him and I think I started to feel a little bit like it was only going one way after that point you know like look he's this is what's happening this is his mentality he's got his persona just did he feel it was okay when he was in that persona to to be that way towards women it's, it's hard isn't it to, to, to really fathom uh, what was really going on but all the sort of evidence, everything that's out there points towards him having some serious mental health problems and that, you know, th- these were the reasons why he went and, and took the actions that he took. What's up, everybody? It's your good friend, Lukey, and I appreciate you watching this video. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a comment with suggestions, which is the reason you're seeing this video, And also, if this is just a single video and you're saying, where's the full interview, look at the upper left-hand corner and you can find the full interview or check in our video section. We're rapidly trying to improve this channel and it takes support from not just myself, but also people that enjoy the channel to keep me motivated and try to give you the best boxing content. Be sure to go to itrboxing.com for all of your boxing needs. This is Luke.